Okay, uh, we are on YouTube now. All right, so the topic is a comparison of the views of Wynne Godley and James Tobin on uh, monetary matters. I'll start by saying a few things about uh, how Keynesian those two economists were. Then I'll mention a few things about stock flow consistency approach. And uh, then the main topic, which is uh, banks and the monetary uh, system. As an introduction, I should say that uh, I am rather biased. I have a biased view because on the one hand, I uh, worked with Wynn Godley for nearly 10 years, whereas I only met James Tobin twice and I had a discussion with him only once. And this was in 1987. Okay, uh, how Keynesian are those two economists? Well, if we think about Wynn Godley, uh, for a while, he was accused of being a closet monetarism. Uh, and he had the, there was a big discussion between his research group, which was called the New Cambridge School, versus the more standard Italo-Cambridge Keynesian School, uh, where uh, Richard Kahn in particular was. And this was in the 70s. And in 1983, uh, Cripps, who was the co-author of Wynne Godley, had to say at a conference that what they were doing was Keynesian monetary economics, because some thought, well, it was a bit monetarist. But there's absolutely no doubt about this now, and uh, Godley is considered as a full member of the post-Keynesian school. Uh, Tobin, on the other hand, uh, himself thought he was uh, a Keynesian. Uh, this is what Robert Diamond, who, was, uh, who did his PhD with Tobin, says. Uh, he says that Tobin self-identified as a Keynesian. And indeed, when I uh, listened to Tobin the first time in the early 1980s, he was... Uh, he was criticizing Milton Friedman, Barrault, Robert Lucas, rational expectations. Uh, but in the end, uh, if we want to summarize who Tobin was, well, it was the neoclassical synthesis, plus the fact that he paid a lot more attention to money than did his colleagues at the time. Uh, well, both Tobin and Godley have developed more or less simultaneously, their own view of what today we call the stock flow consistent approach. And this was in the 70s and in the 1980s. Uh, I think we can say that the main feature of the stock flow consistent approach is that it manages to fully integrate both the real and the financial sides of the economy. So the idea is that there must not be any black holes. For instance, if in your model you have bank reserves uh, provided by the central bank, but no government sector, it doesn't make much sense. There's, there's a black hole out there. Uh, now, Godley uh, finally in the mid 1990s managed to uh, get a, a full scale stock flow consistent model. And in that paper, he said that his debt to Tobin was enormous. He said, I could not possibly have made this model without his work, particularly on asset choices. But on the other hand, he uh, complained that Tobin's approach required a lot of uh, complex and opaque mathematical uh, formulations, and, and this made things vague, and uh, it provided complicated answers to simple questions, such as where does the money come from? Um, and I should point out that this stock flow consistent approach is very popular now among post-Keynesian economists. Um, so Essentially, what, what's the distinction between Tobin and Godley on the money supply process? Well, Tobin saw banks essentially as being no different 
from other financial intermediaries. He relied on a variant of the variable money multiplier story, which today is being rejected uh, by all post-Keynesians and also a number of central bankers. Whereas by contrast, uh, Godley had a vision of monetary matters based on banks as creators of loans and on the post-Keynesian endogenous money supply. This is no surprise because he was a very good friend of Nicolas Caldor, who was one of the uh, creator of this money supply and the geneity view. And in this view also reserves are supplied on demand by the central bank at the target interest rate set by the central bank. And this is now the viewpoint defended by central bankers uh, whereas before central bankers used to argue that they were trying to control the, the money supply and that they were not responsible for the level of the rate of interest. So uh, Godley had already this modern view of the money supply process, whereas Tobin did not. Uh, for Godley, the, the main role of banks is to create loans. It's to provide credit to firms who carry on production. And today we would add also provide credit to, uh, consume, for consumer loans or mortgage loans. As I said, the Godley's banks are Caldorian. They respond to the financial needs of their credit worthy clients. Uh, and to the need to finance inventories. So the banks from the very beginning in the work of, uh, of Godley with his co-author Francis Cripps, the banks are creators of credit money. They play an essential systemic role. And uh, his SFC models are consistent with the theory of the monetary circuit according to which production must be initially financed by bank loans to get the ball rolling. And he was also making the distinction between initial finance and final finance. And this is something which you find uh, in particular in this Italian author called Augusto Gazziani. Uh, you can... Uh, which who was a very good friend of Godley, who, who wrote a paper in his honor in 2004. And uh, I have uh, written recently a paper in the Journal of Post-Keynesian Economics on uh, the monetary circuit and uh, Wynne Godley. And uh, Gennaro Zedza, who was a, a research assistant of Godley in the 1980s and who worked with him later, uh, says at the heart of the theory of the monetary circuit, the, the circuit of Augusto Graziani, is the notion shared by Godley that production requires time and that the cost of production have to be paid before receipts from sales can be obtained. Tobin, on the other side, had a completely different view uh, of what banks do. Um, basically, we have the impression that banks, like households, are assumed to make portfolio asset choices based on the differential rates of return uh, among free reserve assets, loans, government bills. So there's, no, there's nothing special about the bank loans. It's just one kind of asset for the banks among many others. So the loans play no special role in this approach. They have no priority. Uh, banks could just as well be any other non-banking financial institution. I, I said earlier that uh, Tobin had a kind of uh, variable money multiplier. And uh, Robert Diamond, again, my Canadian colleague, uh, who was a student of Tobin, says, that uh, for Tobin, the central bank sets the monetary base. So that's the outside money, currency plus reserves. Uh, and then optimizing financial institutions create financial assets, including inside money. So what is endogenous in Tobin's works 
is not the money supply as such, it's the money multiplier or the velocity of money. And as Diamond continues, uh, Tobin models money creation by optimizing banks to derive an upward sloping curve for money. Higher interest rates will induce banks to create more money by choosing a lower reserve deposit ratio. So this means there is an endogenous money multiplier. So it's not the, it's, there's no reverse causation in Tobin as there is in, um, in Godly. And, he, uh, and here another statement by uh, Tom Pally, who uh, was at Yale University when Tobin was teaching. And uh, so what Pally says is that in Tobin, bank lending remains completely invisible and is attributed no role in the money supply process. So bank lending is not, uh, does not appear to be important. And although the money supply is endogenous, the monetary base remains exogenous, which is what gives the model its verticalist character. So in a sense, one could say, well, it's the same as with Friedman or the monetarist. The difference between Tobin and the monetarist is that the money multiplier uh, is variable, can change uh, according to the interest rate and so on. And uh, Randall Ray says exactly the same. He says, Tobin's approach really does not deviate significantly from the exogenous approach in which deposits make loans. In contrast, the post-Kindian endogenous money approach insists that loans make deposits. So this is what I mean by this reverse causation. For neo most neoclassical authors, uh, you need reserves in order to be able to make deposits, and then these deposits allow you to create loans. In the post-Kindian endogenous money approach, the causation is completely reversed, goes the other way around. First, the banks make loans. This creates deposits. And then the banks, if needed, they look for reserves, which the central bank uh, provides defensively. Uh, and so what, what Godley in 1997 uh, wrote is that Tobin never makes the final step essential to my story, essential to the story of Wynne Godley, where bank loans are required to enable industry to function at all. The raison d'être of Tobin's banks, so far as I can see, again, it's Godly speaking, is to enlarge the asset choice of households and facilitate the agility with which it can be made. So uh, once again, the loans for Godley play an essential role. For Tobin, they don't. Tobin, for Tobin, uh, banks are there because they are helpful in giving a better, more asset choice for households. Um, now, there's a, a, another feature where uh, a number of people have become annoyed, so to speak, at Tobin is that Tobin in 1963 published uh, what became an important paper where he was talking about the old view of banking and the, no, the new view of banking. And his new view is the one that has uh, made quite a lot of impact on the thinking of mainstream economists uh, about the role of bank. His new view was that even though banks can create credit ex nihilo from out of nothing thanks to excess reserves, if they, if they get those excess reserves, then afterwards they are no different from non-banks because the banks are also subjected to the same funding constraints as they must convince agents to modify the composition of their portfolio. So if you want, Tobin's new view is, uh, is such that banks are 
just the same as all other uh, financial institutions, uh, and they don't have any uh, special role. Well, post-Keynesians have always uh, blamed uh, Tobin's paper on the old and the new view of banking for being mistaken. But now there's a number of mainstream authors who also blame Tobin, saying that they they pushed the mainstream in the he pushed the mainstream in the wrong direction. Uh, and here I have a citation by Jack Cab and Kumhoff. Uh, Kumhoff used to be at the International Monetary Fund, now working at the Bank of England. And so he blames Tobin for having played a critical role in establishing the intermediation of loanable funds view of Gurley and Shaw as the new dominant paradigm. So for those two uh, mainstream authors, uh, this was a big mistake. And uh, in fact, for them, it explains why all these DSG models uh, were never able to make any good prediction of what was happening during the financial global financial crisis. So what's the difference between banks and non-banks? Uh, and this is important when we are talking about uh, shadow banking system and so on. So when non-banks, so one can have in mind money market funds, mutual funds, even investment banks, when they acquire assets or grant credit before they do so, they must first obtain outside financing. They must get funds from someone else in the very first stage of their decision. They must acquire funds as initial finance. On the other hand, when we're thinking about banks, banks can acquire assets, meaning they can grant new loans, uh, and they can do this out of nothing. They don't need deposits or they don't need prior savings. They don't need excess reserves. They may need, uh, they, they don't need any, any of this. In the second stage, in the final stage, they may need to borrow from outside sources if the created deposits fly away, they flee away, the they, people put their money, say, in a money market fund. But this would only happen after uh, the, as a second stage, what is what we call final finance. So this is a very important distinction between initial finance and final finance, which uh, Wynne Godley made, but which Tobin uh, did not. So I come to my conclusions. Uh, both authors, Godley and Tobin, were very much concerned with monetary matters. So in this sense, uh, we can say that they have some uh, similitude with someone like Minsky, who was also very much concerned with financial matters in contrast to most of their um, colleagues in macroeconomics. Both uh, Godley and Tobin were into stock flow consistent modeling, but uh, and of course here I'm biased, I would argue that the version of Wynne Godley is is superior, it is more realistic, it deals with the traverse, meaning the, the dynamic path uh, from the short run to the long run, and uh, it can explain, it can tell you what happens to all the flows in all the stocks. And Wynne Godley has a circuitist view of the post keynesian endogenous money theory where banks play a crucial role in uh, getting production going and where central banks play a defensive role. And finally, uh, Tobin's new view, if I am to summarize, relies on a variable money multiplier view, as I have said a number of times now, where banks must first access excess reserves from the central bank. And thus, those banks are no different from non-banks. Thank you.
Uh, Professor Lavoie, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, <clears throat> Is there any questions? It's a bit late for most of the people in Europe. <laughs> yes, probably. No, no question, <laughs> Professor. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, no question. Thank you All very right. much. Okay. okay, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.